Hi guys, welcome to Joshua's Tech Tips. So in this video, I have something pretty cool in store for you guys. What I'll be doing today is be showing you how to create a wireless bridge. So what we're gonna do is extend internet and phone services from this building that I'm standing in right now all the way to that small building across there. That security booth there. To do this, we'll be using a pair of the Ubiquiti power beams. If that is something you're interested in seeing, stay tuned to this video. So sometimes we may be required to extend internet services or network services to locations that detach from our primary location. In some situations, running physical cabling may not be best suited one, because of the amount of work that is required to do so, and two, it may be a little too expensive. In situations such as that, we could create a wireless bridge. So today, as I mentioned, we'll be using the Ubiquiti power beams to create a wireless bridge. So our engineering team has already installed the actual dishes, right? The power beams, one is installed there and if I walk down here, I'll show you where the other beam is installed. The other one is installed right on the spool next to the security boot. So here we have a diagram which further clarifies what we're looking to accomplish in this project. So here we have our primary site. So here is where we have our internet connection. So at our primary site, we have a router that was provided by our ISP. This connects us to the internet. So connected to our router is our switch. Our switch is used to distribute internet services to our internal users. We'll also be connecting one of the power beams to our switch. This would be used to transmit network services through the wireless bridge over to the secondary power beam. The secondary power beam is connected to a switch. This switch is used to provide network services to users at the detached location. In this video, we'll be configuring the primary power beam first and then the secondary. The power beams can theoretically transmit data for over 20 kilometers, so this project should be no issue for them whatsoever. So first of all, using the included PoE injector, we want to connect two network cables. One cable connects to the PoE port and the other end to the power beam. The other cable connects to the LAN port and the other end of this cable would connect to your computer. Next, on your computer, we want to assign a static IP address to your network card. The default IP address of the power beam is 192.168.1.20. So we want to assign a similar address in this range. For this example, I'm going to use 192.168.1.15. Next, open a web browser and in the address bar, enter 192.168.1.20. If prompted, select Advance and proceed to the site. Upon logging in for the first time, you'd be greeted with the Power Beams Installation Wizard. Select your country and agree to the terms and services. Once finished, select Continue. You'll now be prompted to create a username and password, as well as to confirm your password. Once finished, select Save. You're now logged in to the Power Beams dashboard. Select the Settings option. Under the Wireless tab, for the Wireless Mode option, make sure this is set to Station PTP. For the SSID, you can name this anything you like. For this example, I'm going to name it Long Range. Next, enable wireless security and select the WPA2 Personal option and enter a password you'd like to use. 
Once you're finished, select Save Changes. Next, head over to the Network tab. Here we need to change the default static IP address of the power beam to an address within the range of our internal network. So for this example, my network is 10.4.0.1, so I'm going to set 10.4.0.20 as the static IP for this power beam. You need to set one that's applicable to your internal network range. I'm entering my router's IP address as the gateway IP and save my changes. So now that we have finished configuring this power beam, we want to disconnect the network cable connecting my computer to the LAN port of the PoE injector and keep it connected to the LAN port of the injector and the other end would now go to either our router or our switch that feeds our network. We also want to connect our computer to the network either wirelessly or using a network cable directly connected to our switch or our router. Next, we want to remove the static IP address set on our network card and set it to automatically receive an IP address. Let's now open a web browser and see if we can find a power beam on our network. We can do this by entering the static IP address we assigned to the power beam in the address bar. And as you can see, we successfully found a power beam on our network. We now want to repeat the same process to log in to the second power beam located at the security boot. Access the power beam by entering the default IP address. And follow through with the setup wizard. From the dashboard, select the wireless tab and turn on access point and PTP mode. You need to set the same SSID and WPA password that you set on the first unit and save your changes. Next, select the network tab and set a static IP address on your network range for this unit as well. For the first unit, I set 10.4.0.20. For this unit, I'm going to set 10.4.0.21. Remember, this IP address needs to be applicable to your internal network range. And once again, I'm going to set my router as my gateway IP. Once finished, save your changes. Now we're going to remove the static IP address we have on our computer and set it once more to automatically receive an IP address. Let's now see if we can access the second power beam with its static IP. Upon logging in, we can see that our wireless bridge has been successfully created. Here we can see our primary and secondary power beams as well as the approximate distance of 450 meters. So let's do a real world test. Let's see if we could browse to YouTube. And I'm gonna search for my favorite tech channel on YouTube. And there we have it. As you can see, internet seems to be working fine. Browsing seems to be responsive. And we could successfully access YouTube. Let's try streaming a video. And video is streaming without any issue. Alright guys, so that brings us to the end of this video. Remember, if you like the content I'm creating, be sure to like the video. Also consider subscribing to my YouTube channel and clicking on the notification bell to be notified once a new video is released. Also, if you're interested in purchasing this power beam, I'm going to leave an Amazon link in the video description where you can purchase it. In closing, if you found this video useful, be sure to let me know in the comment section and let me know if there's any scenarios where you think you might be able to use something like this. Thanks again for viewing guys. See you soon.